Okay, guys, here we are again. Another. We'll see what we can get done tonight. Hopefully, I'm not falling asleep like I was last night, but this is the progress so far. We're going to scoot these guys off to the side. We've got one, two, three, four, and we started on the sixth one, and then we've got some, these three other guys to do, and then we'll be done with the auxilia. So that's what we're going to hop to it and uh, see if we can change the angle a little bit so you don't see the top of my head. That's not what you came here for. Uh, we can make a special channel of that if that's what you guys are into. But uh, this is for painting stuff, so let's uh, make some adjustments here. And let's see if we can get this to cooperate. Okay, we're gonna be painting. All right. All right, this is the guy we we're working on. And let's see if I can do an autofocus on this area there. Not an autofocus, but just focus on that area. Oh, we were doing his face. Cool. I like that. Now, we don't have any of this stuff left. So let's go ahead and put some more of this. Uh... Airbrush thinner. It's pretty expensive, but if I'm using it for this, I don't mind spending the money for it. Make it so that the paint doesn't gum up as much on the brush when you're painting these things that don't require a lot of a lot of um, paint on them. So we'll see if that's the case. I don't think the fan's on high enough. Let's uh, go. No. So I don't paint with poor air circulation. That's uh, that's in my contract. All right. So right. This, oh, dried out some. That's strange. And let's set that to there. Okay, good. All right. One more day, folks, and then we got the weekend, so almost there. For those of us that work normal, non-messed up schedules. So. See, we did some of the, I said I was going to do his face and I just couldn't finish it last night. I was dog tired, so. Well, let's see what we got here. Australian Greg, get a sister's place north of Sydney. Okay, well, hopefully you do some gaming. Long weekend, that means you're staying till... You're living a long weekend. That means you must, you must be staying through Monday? Um, what long weekend? It's, there's no weekend this week. You guys are probably celebrating something silly. They got everything back asswards in Australia. <laughs> No, I don't know. What are you celebrating, Greg? Or what's the holiday? I take it it's Mark's holiday, not yours. You're, you can take the holiday anytime you want, you know? So, um, and John Peter, hello. You caught me at the beginning. You did. I'm surprised you're, well, maybe I'm not surprised. You're, you're a night owl. It's got to be like one o'clock. 
I know the people that are active at one. I'm not one of them. I'd rather uh, go to sleep at eight o'clock in the in the evening and wake up at one than uh, stay up till one. I wouldn't be able to manage very well on that. All right, let's go ahead and add some more of this uh, the core. You guys have seen this enough. You know my flesh mix, and I'm already screwing up. I need to go ahead and do the eyes because this sculptor decided to be a difficult and gave this guy eyes. Eyes big enough that I'm going to have to paint him or he's going to look like he's um, out of place. So, Labor long weekend. And yes, I'll be there to Monday. Lorraine is staying with my sister. Okay. Well, we may have a video next week or we may not. It depends on how many people show up. So... We'll just have to see. But even, you wouldn't see it while you're over there because the way it works is, uh, even, you wouldn't see it while you're over there because the way it works is uh, we film on Monday night and um, I don't have time to do anything. I basically have to go to bed. I think last Monday we we gamed. I was up till one in the morning and um, and start uploading it and upload it Tuesday night but um, even when I upload it to YouTube, it takes a matter of hours for it to um, finish all the processing. So it usually doesn't go, it's not completely done until, um, that's generally what the, I actually had a scare last Monday. I looked at my files and, um, and I only had one file for the video. And normally it's in 33 minute sections. So if you film a video that's, 36 minutes long, you'll have one section that's 33 minutes long and one that's three minutes. I, I don't know why, 33 minutes and something seconds or whatever, uh, it just, it, it stops and it creates another file. So you just, on Tuesday when I took the, a look at the file, I saw only, I see only one file, which to me means, and we played for like three and a half hours, so it seems to me that it, it would have been like, so, um, I got scared that we didn't have a, a playable video for whatever reason, which is less work for me. It's never done that before. I've made, I've never had to do it in one chunk. So, um, I didn't, it's, it's one of those reasons. That's why I hate technology because things will work one, one way, one time. And then the next time will work a different way. And nobody can tell you why that is. I didn't change anything. So, um, anyhow, but, uh, regardless, we got that video out, but I did get a, I did get a scare. I did get a scare that I thought we weren't going to do it, so. Let's go for blue eyes, <laughs> you say, you sadist. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, this isn't a 54 millimeter scale. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, we'll be playing in in a one-day warband theme tournament on Sunday. Mark is taking Tupi, and I'll be running Prussians. Oh, my money's on the Tupi. The Prussians are horrible. God, they're horrible. That's not the Prussians that uh, people think of when it's Prussians. Those guys are terrible. We did Prussians and Estonians one time, and that was, uh, that was fairly even. They won it. We didn't film it. Right? The one we didn't film. The one that didn't get uploaded. Maybe we did. I don't know. It's all a blur. Anyways, we did a, in the last month or last two months, we played a, 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 a mini tournament where everybody brought shooting armies and uh, Luke brought um, Tupi. I believe that's the one. And uh, five games, something like that. He did really well with them. God, I keep throwing myself off. I'm trying to have a conversation and paint, and and I'm no good at that. So I would have said we're going to do eyes. So we put the white down. Let's do the eyes. Okay, all we're going to do is just make these little oblongs here. Same thing over here. All right, and 
is this the thinnest one I have or did I, do I have one that's even thinner? Let's see. I think that's the one. I've got newer ones, but I mean the ones that I've already been using. Yeah, this one it is. All right, let's uh, get some black now. Hey, I resemble that remark. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, if I did blue eyes, I'd have to do this in blue and then somehow get black in the center of it. I, I, no, I'm not doing that. That's crazy. It'll make a brush that thin. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and... Um... Get some uh, flush here. No, oh, don't do brown eyes either. They're just they're all black. Just a no pupils on these guys. No pupils and no no irises in uh, in um, fifteen mil here. Okay, Greg, have a good uh, trip. All right. I couldn't stay up as long as I wanted to last night. I just didn't have it in me. I was just, I was falling asleep. Just falling asleep. Yeah, no, I don't want to dot the eye. That's what I used to do. What I used to do was uh, go and do the eye, but um, I don't know if I saw it or um, the eye socket white, and then I uh, and then I put a vertical black line through it, and I. But I do that at this stage, so that I can, you know, I mean the the black line. Like for instance, I can tell that it goes on the cheekbone here, so we'll just paint we'll just paint over it. You know, but uh, that's what I wouldn't want to paint them at all. But they, you know, they, they went and gave you a three dimensional like eyeball that's sticking out from the figure. So you kind of have to do that. But I would have preferred not to paint the eyes. Um, I paint a lot. I have a lot of figures by olders of old glory. Uh, I don't have a problem with them. Um, but um, they have. Two, I, I don't know if they have two different sculptors, but they got figures that are sculpted in two different size and sizes. And uh, a so let's start over. Hold on, I know what's wrong. I'm not having any caffeine. Okay. Ugh. There's two different styles of sculptor face of 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 sculptor 
well, I just can't get it right. I, I think I may just need to have to disconnect and start over. There's two different styles of face sculpting in the old glory castings. One of them has bulbous eyes and and big high cheekbones, neither one of the two, which I like. And the other one just kind of has uh, uh, like slots, almost like uh, they're more realistic looking. And that's the one I prefer, but uh, you know, I think it's all the same sculptor. I just think that they just, I don't know. I don't like the whole cheekbone things. I'm not a cheekbone person. Um, I don't have big cheekbones. I'm not attracted to people with big cheekbones. I don't want to paint people with cheekbones. <laughs> no, I mean, they're really like, they're really out of place. But like my Armenians or whatever, they've got a couple guys that are, that are that way as well. Uh, I don't want to dig my figures out, but you just have to take my word for it. Go to their uh, website and you'll see that uh, some, of their, uh, some of their figures are very, very much like that. So they just look awkward. So... But with those, you have to paint the eyeball because they're they're bulbous. They literally stick off the, the face. Um, so anyhow. Oh, you people with high cheekbones get offended. Oh, well. There's a poll I saw recently. It says most, most men prefer women with high cheekbones. I'm not one of them. So, you know, I get all the rest. You guys can all fight over the... The high cheekbone women, so. <laughs> oh. All right, and we're going to put a little bit more. Let's uh, let's rinse all this crap out. This detail brush is kind of misbehaving a little bit. Um, or as I like to say, I'm losing confidence in it a little bit. So, all right. One more day, then it could be Saturday, and then... Oh, there won't be any painting Saturday morning. Damn it! I gotta take the car in for service. For oil change. PM, preventative maintenance. And I didn't do it last weekend. So. Nothing's wrong with it. It's just that time of the year. It's that time of the... It's that time of the miles. So that'll be, uh, go to the dealership, uh, spend like 45 minutes there, watch some television, and, uh, and then drive back home, so. Ooh, fun. But I've gotta be there when they open, which is about seven o'clock. So, eh, maybe I can paint for about an hour. We'll see. Sunday, we should have a long painting session, though. I want to get these guys done, man. I want to move on to the next army. I want to, I want to make my final decision what the next army is that I'm going to work on. I don't want to decide now. I decide now. I still have some armies of this of this one to be painted, and it just gives me time to change my mind on it. So, yeah.
You just finished off your Indians. They were and still could be a WRG Army 84 elements. I can now present anything on the Indian list. There you go. Hey, Kevin, how are you? It's, uh... Hmm. All right, let's lighten this up. For those of you that missed the um, the live woods thing, I am going to be making more of those woods. So they were a hit the other night, and I want some smaller ones. I uh, those other ones are a little bit on the larger side. We have I have like a little round one. I'm going to make more along that size. So I got plenty of the of the um, woodland scenic stuff to to make them. So I'll be making a few more of those. Don't know if it'll be this weekend. We got to knock these guys out and be done with them. I mean, I could still do more things. I could do three stands of Bowman that you could replace the blades with, or that, you know, it's like at some point I'm just kind of like, okay, I don't want to build all the options because, you know, I'm wanting to work on something else. So I'm wanting to work on something else that has flags. So you guessed that it, it's not book one army. <laughs> Although one of these days I'm going to, I'll build the later Sargonids. I got the figures for the later Sargonids. And, um, they would look good. It's not that they wouldn't look good, but um, don't get to paint any flags for them. But I do get, if you build chariots, you get to um, put the, uh, I'm going to call it thread, even though the, the stuff I use is synthetic, but you get to... Um, You get to uh, thread the reins in. I've got one chariot army, my Terracotta Warriors, Chin Dynasty Chinese. And um, they have two chariots, so I ended up putting the reins in through there. So that made a, I think it made a big difference. It certainly was fun to do. What was that? You're still watching your silliness game. I watch it one game at a time. And you watch it slow too. You're retired. You're you're like retired, aren't you? Yeah, you should have already had it watched and a uh, couple times and done a book report on them. <laughs> yeah. Mitch and his rutabagas. <laughs> it's a rutabaga man. That's that's become his fetish, so. We'll see. He's in, embraced the... Hey, Kelly, you got all your paints out, your Essex Macedonians? I know my paint schemes. This is the weekend. Okay. Wait, you already have a weekend? You don't have to work one more day? Book two. Retired, unemployed, parked. The government keeps my company rolling while I push lead, roll dice, drink beer, and have fun. There you go. 
starting to sound like Marty. Are you are you German Marty? <laughs> We have a high incidence of German descended players in our group. Incidence? Occurrence? Yeah, the other day I was playing. It's like everybody was German except me. <laughs> uh, the Harbachs are German. Marty's Danish, German, Viking, something like that. Nordic. Joe is uh, German as well. Yeah. My ancestors were allied with the Germans, the Catholic ones anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny. Lots of people in this country don't know where they come from, though. They don't really know what they're. I'll, I'll say I'll say their name, and they'll go, "Oh, you know, oh, your your last name, your surname is this, that, or the other," and they'll be like, "How do you know that?" I'm like, "How do you not know that?" <laughs> I'm not sure it's an American thing. Uh, I, I thought that maybe it was only Americans that were really bad at geography or stuff like that in history, but no. It, it, there's, there's dumb folks everywhere. <laughs> nope, contract job, they cut our hours to 32 due to COVID. And we're about to get insane busy. We we're so freaking busy at work. So, das ist reich. John Peters live in the dream. Yeah. We're taking over the world one table at a time. Easy there. What, third time's a charm? <laughs> Your mom's family is German. Dad is hillbilly. Oh, there you go. <laughs> hillbilly. Is that uh, Sc Scots Irish? <laughs> Davis is um, English, pretty sure. Another army could be next. I got four or five finalists. I'm sure I'll make my decision. I just got to be really careful because I don't want to start them and not finish them <clears throat> like I've done with other armies. You know, I'm kind of on a good roll here that um, the last couple I've done from start to finish. You know, I could upgrade some of my armies to 3.0. That would make sense, but that's not fun. Uh, that's not something to look forward to. Um, uh, I could build uh, a couple of armies from... You know, I, I mentioned earlier, I think that I'm going to stick to the boring army, uh, not boring army mentality. So, in other words, an army that's just kind of plain clothed and then the next one I do one that's fancier like these guys would fall into the plain clothed army the next army I'm going to do is almost certainly one that's going to be fancy and it doesn't mean they need to be you know medieval French not that there's anything wrong with the medieval French but you know that's kind of extreme Condotta would be extreme um but one that has several flags not just the flag for the leader kind of thing pendants that kind of stuff so um, bound to be book four for sure. So, um, you could not have planned this better. Yeah. I am. Um, This would be tough without the internet, I'll tell you what. Because like even if I didn't have local players, I could probably get by this no gaming with just being able to do videos. 
I mean, if it came down to it, I could play solo videos and film them. Um, I would rather paint, though. I mean, because I can't do that with um, with the other folks. But um, yeah, I'm glad this didn't happen before um, we did more. Like, I'm all right if we never have another convention again. I mean, I don't want that to happen, but, you know, say we all want to go to conventions, all right? <laughs> well, the convention, the convention organizers at least, and it's a, kind of a non-for-profit. I'm not involved in it at all, but, I, you know, I'm seeing from the outside. Uh, I don't want to get involved in anything that's political or anything like that, so I'm out, all right? So, um, but they're all volunteers, and... Um, the it's a non for profit so you know you've got to uh, find a place that's affordable you've got to find people that are going to come to the convention and uh, you know it has to be allowed you know that your government has to allow that whatever convention or show to go on regardless of all the, if all the other things fall into place so I'm not so sure that um, that's going to be the case um, to allow it. And then even if they'd allowed it, let's say half the people are too scared to come to be in proximity with other folks. It doesn't become, um, you can't run a profitable convention and not lose a ton of money. So you still can't hold it. So I think a lot of things have to change from that standpoint. It wouldn't. So even if it was allowed, it still wouldn't be enough, enough people and not sink the club. So, um, but it doesn't bother me so much because, you know, we still have our local game club and, and, and we can still get the good word out about DBA through, you know, methods like this, our games and stuff like that. It's not like we have to put on a game at a show for people to become aware of, of, of our games. So uh, from that standpoint, um, you know, I'm not so stressed out or heartbroken about it. So, um, Point no rules. I don't think so. I never played hot because it wasn't really compatible with the, the the mechanics weren't. It wasn't that there was other troop types or that it was fantasy. I figured out why you don't like book one armies. No flags. Yes. And no, not a lot of information. I have to pull out too many things out of my ass. Um, I like, you know, some things that you know about it and then you can put your own spin on it. But uh, you want to have at least one army from each book. I've got two book one armies, but neither one of them are painted. And um, I got, if Mitch didn't have Assyrians already, I might be tempted to do Assyrians because they'd look good. I mean, they would, I'd be really happy with how they, how they would end up looking. Um, but he's already got Assyrians and no flags, you know, so. Um, Assyrians, definitely the guys you don't want to move in. You don't want them to move in next door to you. <laughs> I bought them at a uh, at Historicon in two thousand and seven. The army I have. The guy was selling mounted figures for like thirty cents, and foot figures for like seventeen cents a figure. So I bought like the whole army for like six bucks, all from museum. Bought some Mongols too, bought like a Mongol army to do. I'm afraid about doing Mongols. If I did Mongols, it's gonna tempt me to work on house rules to how to deal with Mongols, and then I may like them too much and may not want to play standard DBA 3.0. So I've kind of avoided playing Mongols. The, I think Mongols aren't handled really well in, in DBA. Or many other rule sets as well, so. Tony is on. Hooray. Oh, you're so easy to please. <laughs> 
What a bargain. Yeah, uh, I have a ton of lead, but I got it at prices. I just wasn't going to leave it there. So um, that's when I like to buy things. So it's like, well, I don't really need this, but I'm not leaving it there for eight bucks. You know, um, you have to get a Sea People's Army, but I couldn't do them justice when painting them. Aren't museum miniatures on the largest size? It depends. It totally depends. They're all over the place. And even with that said, I don't dislike them. Um, they have a unique look. Um, the Assyrian uh, figures are a little on the larger size, but their horses are a little on the smaller size. Their horses almost look like big greyhounds. Uh, the chariot horses, I should say. Um, they've got some medieval figures that are very minuscule looking. Um, they're all over the place. And I understand they're all the same sculptor. It was the, the owner is who the sculptor is. And he has a unique style, which I don't mind. But uh, yeah, sometimes the scaling on his figures are all over the place. Um, but, you know, I, I know that going in, so I'm not too worried about it. You want a chariot heavy book one force. Well, there's many to choose from. There's many to choose from. I wish there were, I wish they had made, made special rules for chariots, uh, heavy chariots or whatever, to differentiate them between them and knights instead of just treating them both the same. Um, they didn't have to be better or worse. They just, uh, I just wish they were different, you know? So they'd be like, okay, well, I'm going to take knights uh, as opposed to chariots because they, I get a different um, scenario to kind of work around. So... All right, we're going to paint this guy's jacket and let's do this color. What is this? Stone gray. Oh, this guy's going to be stoned. Oh. Uh oh, what do we got here? Yeah. We're going to use that color for his over whatever that he's got on. All right, there's the black still alive over here. Oh, we don't need that big, that thin brush. We need to save that for special projects like faces and stuff. It's pretty small too. There we go. No point in wearing out a a detailed brush when you're trying to work on areas that many brushes could do the job. So Yeah, I thought about doing a green jacket, but this guy just ended up do looking like a game show host or what's that? Don't they wear a green golfing jacket? I don't know jack about golfing. I don't know jack about sports. I know even less than jack about golfing. Yeah. The the person that wins gets a green blazer or something like that. Woo! I don't know. I've heard rumors about that. Okay. I think 
the girls are home. Let me check in with them and I'll be right back. And um, we'll keep on keeping on. Okay. Four board people still here. Okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, da, 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 da. Your last video you commented, book two was Rome versus the well, world. Well, it's also Alexander versus the world as well. Yeah, but... Well, there's also China against the world, too. But... Um, but Alexander wasn't around that long. Uh, I prefer Alexander's stuff to Rome, but um, because he's kind of the com you know more more of a um, uh, Swiss Army knife of an army. But uh, there's so many damn. I mean, every Roman army is in book. Nah, there's. I think there's an early Roman army in book one, but there's so many armies in book two, and people are very Roman centric. And uh, I didn't have any. I didn't have any love for the Roman period stuff when you know when I first started playing DBA. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not an ancient medieval gamer. Uh, well, I wasn't. Uh, I'd never played an ancient medieval game before 2004 when I played DBA. Never before. Never played one. Um, just didn't appeal to me. And um, so, yeah, it's kind of new to this. So. Yeah, lots of people like the the Roman uh, sphere of things. I prefer Alex. I really prefer the successors, to Alexander, because at least they were around for a long time and they fought each other, um, among other people. But you know, the problem with the Roman stuff is that. Um, A lot of people that they fought, I don't think the battles are that well balanced. I think the Romans have a, I think the Romans pretty much have an edge on everybody they fight until you get to, in DBA, until you get to, um, until the Romans turn into uh, the early Imperials. Because then they lose so many of the legionnaires and they go to the auxilia. And sometimes you're just fighting folks that the auxilia just aren't really match up well against, like Parthians. Um, but um, but I think uh, any, the, any the Polybians and the Marian Romans have an edge on anybody else they fight. Um, they're just, they don't need pips to get the job done. And they're solid. And they can pretty much kill anybody that comes after them. So, um, yeah. But I actually I prefer I prefer the successor stuff because you got knights and you got pike. And I love I love pikemen. Pikemen look cool, and you got to give up. You got to give them a little ground with the uh, you know with the the fact that they have to back each other up, and it's kind of an interesting challenge. You know, they're more combined arms than that. The Roman armies just aren't. Um, Uh, really well suited for that, so.
You like the steppe armies. Oh, are you a Mongol lover? <laughs> uh, I know lots of people that like the Mongols. I, I never could get into the Mongols. Steppe armies. There is a steppe army that's on the to-do list. It, it could be the odds are it's probably the next one. If you had to put your money on what the next army is, assuming I don't decide to finish up the Russians, which is what I should do, honestly. But uh, odds are, if you had to put odds on something, the next army is probably going to be a step homeland army. That's all I'm going to say. So, um, I don't want to say it's something and then a week from now go, ah, I'm changing my mind what it is. Steppenwolf. <laughs> no. No, we did do a tournament that had one of the nicest plaques that I ever made. I, I found this artwork by... I must have been... Um, who's my hero? Angus McBride. It must have been by Angus McBride, but not an Osprey book. Something that he did before that. Um, he did a series... He did a lot of artwork in... in I want to say it's a, a magazine for like kids that called like Look and Learn. Um, I've never seen any of them, but when you do a Google image search for stuff, you come across this stuff. I want to say there's a English or British um, kids magazine called Look and Learn, and it would have you know little short stories about different people, um, different things in it. And um, but it was called Step Right Up, so it was all step and. Um, was it all step armies? Was it only step armies? It might have been only step armies. It might have been step and hilly. You know, because you got to give people like 40 or 50 army choices. If you give them only like 20, then, um, or if you give them a lot of choices that they don't make figures for and you know people aren't going to pick that army, you end up with, you know, everybody playing just a handful of different armies. So, um, yeah, that was... Um, That was a pretty cool tournament. And I had a cool little plaque. It had a cute little Mongol looking dude, but it wasn't. Uh, he's a Silk Road looking guy. Like a, He looked like a guy in a back drink camel was on a Silk Road. It was pretty. I, I liked it. I didn't win it, but I liked it. Don't remember right off the bat who I played. I'm, I'm sure I morphed something because I still don't have a step army. That's the one where you got to put mandatory um, gentle hills, which I'm terrified of putting them down. I'm terrified of putting them down and and benef and helping my opponent. Like they get placed somewhere where they can pick the side and uh, they just sit on the hill and park it there. Um, but you know, that's a reason to build a step army. So uh, if you never played a Dry army is a reason to build a dry army so you could play one, you know. So, Yeah, I never really cared for the Mongols much, so paint the Scythians. That should be a nice challenge for you. I had a Scythian army and I sold it. 
It was uh, made by Falcon Figures. And I sold it probably over 10 years ago. I just couldn't get into it. It was, uh, it should paint fast because it's almost all light horse, but I, I don't think DBA handles light horse properly. It really, it, of all the troop types you can play, in my opinion, the light horse feel the most unrepresentative of what they should feel like. Um, I don't, I'm not saying that they're not balanced or anything like that. I just, I just don't think they're represented well. So, I, you do not want me to build a light horse army because as soon as I do, I'm going to want to do house rules for them and they're going to rock and the next thing you know, we're going to be playing alternate version DBA and split the community, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't want to, um, I don't want to, I, I certainly have thoughts on it. Uh, I'm going to save those thoughts and uses for when we work on the Renaissance rules, if that ever comes to fruition. Uh, I was already ready. What was keeping me from doing that was the laptop. I got the laptop and I'm like, okay, okay I'm good to go. But since I got the laptop, which was in March, the situation has changed in the world that everybody wants to argue about everything and get in your face. And I'm just like, you know what? I don't have the stomach for that right now and working on rules and, you know, play testing. Uh, I need, we're better served um, enjoying this game and showing you guys if you got any questions about it you might you know be inspired to try it we don't really want to divide and and all that kind of stuff and you know ultimately when we do come up with the rules they'll be free and they'll be whatever we want them to be and if people don't like them that's fine you don't have to play them you know so um it's not saying we don't want other people's input but we kind of don't want other people's input so um you know um Anyhow, um, we have we meet regularly enough and have people that ha that like to break things enough that um, it they should be really good. But um, you know, but anyhow, that's all I'm gonna say. So um, I'm doing all this for free. So you know. People always say, hey, do this or do that, do the other thing. Well, you know, it's got to be something that I enjoy doing or I'm not going to do it because I'm, it's, it's a, this is a non-for-profit. And the worst thing you could do is, uh, is get me to burn out. We don't, we don't want that. So this needs to be, this is a therapy first. So um, I don't want to come up with alternate rules for Light Horse. So the easiest way is to just not build a light horse army. That's just probably the best thing at this time. Because I don't want to lose momentum painting. I've been really successful doing that in the last, what are we, October? Let's just say this year. I've been very successful this year painting. I got a tons more to paint that I want to paint. And uh, let's just keep that going, so. You know, just like I could make the pay, I could make our gaming videos a lot better. I could spend a week editing them and making them more perfect. I don't want to, because that's not what I want to do. I want to paint and uh, and have a good time. So you know, um, yeah. And I don't want my phone to crash. I don't want to make them so complicated. To, you know, the phone to crash. Uh, the last video I did. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it, but, um, you know, anytime you put pictures or something in there or names pop in, that really drags down the performance and increases the chance of your, cross, or your video being processed to jam and not processed properly. It doesn't sound like it's a big deal, but it is. This three and a half hour video that I did the other day, I didn't put people's names when they appeared and stuff on there. It's just kind of minimalist. I didn't put their pictures and stuff because some people wanted to see what they looked like. I didn't put my picture on there because you guys already know what I look like. But, uh, you know, Marty and, and so forth. Um, I didn't want to pop people's name in and out. I like to do that. I like to put people's name in. It pops in and it pops out or it spins in and spins out. That kind of stuff really... Uh, 
uses up a lot of horsepower, let's put it that way, when it's processing and it causes it to jam or take, you know, a day and a half. So I need to limit that kind of stuff that would potentially make the videos better looking because then it's going to cause frustration and I can't use my phone while it's happening and it's going to increase the chances that I'm not going to make another video. And you got, I don't think you guys want that. I certainly don't want that. So, um, anyhow. That's the thought behind it all, the behind the scenes stuff that you don't see. So, um, make the rules pay what you want. No, I don't want to do it for money. Um, I've thought about doing something, pay as you want. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'll tell you if I see it, um, if I get around to doing it. And um, again, it's going to be something that I want to do because you want, but I, I don't want to take money from people because um, I don't want to get into the copyright infringements. And okay, like for instance, I'm not going to mention any names, but there's at least two rule sets that I can think of that have ripped somebody else's work off. And I wouldn't have a problem with it if they weren't charging for it, but they are. And um, I just... I don't want to be confrontational about it, but it, it just, I wouldn't do it. You know, I just, just some things I just wouldn't do. It just sends the wrong message. Okay. Um, I guess that's a better way to explain it. You know, it's like if you go, okay, I'll give you an example. Let's say you play Flames of War, right? And some people play Flames of War and they'll build an army. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> they'll build an army of say, um, um, Northwest Europe, I don't play Flames of War, but I've seen this at conventions. They'll play like a, a Northwest Europe army and they'll play, say, Poles, okay? Like from Poland, like a Polish division or something like that. So they'll wear the Polish shirt or something like that. And I've seen some people that'll play uh, a Wehrmacht force and they wear a Wehrmacht t-shirt or, you know, unit insignia or whatever. And, you know, Germans are very popular in World War II gaming because... They had, let's face it, they had cool uniforms and equipment and everything. I mean, they were rap bastards, but they had cool insignia for other units and all that kind of stuff. But when you wear that stuff, it sends the wrong message to the person that's not paying attention. You know, a war gamer is going to know, okay, well, they're just wearing Hermann Goering Division a t-shirt because that's who they're playing in the game. But... If you see them on the street, it just makes it look like you're something that you're not. And it just sends the wrong message. Like, I wouldn't want to run into a World War II vet and then be wearing something like that. It's like, um, it's just a game kind of thing, you know? Um, that's what I get at, you know? Um, I wouldn't want to do things because it just sends the, like that, that that seem wrong to me because it, because it sends the wrong message. And I got pretty thick skin, okay? But I'm just saying that, you know... Um, that's taking things a little too far, in my opinion. If I see somebody with that, it doesn't offend me, you know, but I'm um, just saying I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Just like I wouldn't charge for somebody else's work. Um, let me give you an example. Let's say uh, we come up with a really cool version of DBA that has um, many things that uh, we feel could make the game better while still feeling like it's the same game, all right? Uh, I would never charge for it, and there wouldn't be any new army list, so you still have to buy Phil's rules. And he still gets, he still makes his money for his creation. We're just giving you these alternative things that you could use to enhance the experience. Um, and of course, it would be free. Um, that's just how I would roll, you know? So, um, yeah. Okay, enough about that. Um, Do the fluffy stuff such as pictures of the troops and players as separate posts and leave the games as they are. Uniforms by Hugo Boss. In high school, I had a U.S. Air Cab t-shirt and a homeless guy screaming at me to take it off. I was so freaked out. Wow. Okay, that's a, that's a bit much. <laughs> They have lots of stuff on there, you know. They have a t-shirt that 
Uh, I don't know if you're familiar. I'm a World War II nut. Believe it or not, I'm doing this crap. I'm 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 a World War II nut, not this. I don't even though I don't play World War II, but currently, um, they've got that T-shirt that has a symbol of like the U.S. tank destroyers, and it looks like a black cat like crunching on a, on a tire track. That's a cool. That's a cool symbol. That's a cool symbol. But um, yeah, I think that's why Germans are popular. I, I don't think that it's any kind of uh, supremacist type uh, thing like that. It's just uh, they had cool symbols and, you know, hey, that's why um, that was their appeal to get people in their armed forces, you know. So, yeah, uniforms by Hugo Boss. <laughs> <sighs> I wouldn't want to be a German reenactor and then come across a U.S. vet. I mean, it just, or a British vet or, you know. I don't care about the Russians. They were, those, those fuckers were assholes. <laughs> they could have killed each other the last man. I wouldn't care. That's where I grew up. When I, any of my gaming in World War II, I prefer the Eastern Front. Because it was just like, okay, it was bad guy versus bad guy, you know. Um, yeah. I don't have a nice thing to say about communists at all. So, anyhow, um, this is not an ideological uh, <laughs> thing on here. Hey, I value freedom too much. I value your own freedom to like those guys. So, um, but I do like the Eastern Front gaming. That's uh, that's where the. That's where the big to do was. That's what I think defined everything else. Most vets would probably appreciate recreators of both sides. Well, it's way too hot to do reenactments in Florida. I can tell you that already. You know, you don't have time to do everything. You know, I mean, I spent a lot of time painting, but this is my only hobby. You know, I'm not watching sports. I'm not going to hockey games. I'm not, you know. Well, nobody's doing that now. But what I'm saying is, is, you know, just normally this is this is the only you have a, a finite amount of time. So, you know, if you do reenactment, you know, you can't really do this amount of painting. So you kind of have to choose. Uh, I've been doing very little video gaming, if any at all, in the last um, three months because I've been doing it th doing this. This is a lot more um, pleasurable. You have something to show for it, and, and even more so, it's something that I can give back to the community. I mean, maybe you guys are just painting while I'm rambling on and not really, not anything more than that, but at least, you know, you guys are quote unquote being helped. Uh, I don't know. It's just my way of giving back. I've spent a lot of, I've watched a lot of things on YouTube and you know, uh, I'm not the world's genius of anything, but uh, maybe there's something that I'll see that might inspire you to uh, work on Macedonians or something like that. So, you know, this is all good. This is a, this is a therapeutic hobby. This keeps us from going to the shrink. <laughs> I guess maybe there's some people that game and do get angry. Um, just like I'm sure, just like I've heard that there's people that drink and get angry. I don't know any of those people, but um, you know, uh, it should be a relaxing activity or, you know, why even do it?
Just got my goth army from Baweda in mail today. Okay. They make nice figures. I haven't had the pleasure of painting any of them. I do have some Normans to do for them. But, um, you know, as soon as somebody that I play with frequently, as soon as I find out they have an army or they're working on it, it's like, okay, they're, you know, I'm not interested in painting them anymore. Not because they're not interesting, but it's like, you know, it is a group effort, you know. Um, I mean, there's no reason. There's 500 and something armies. There's no reason why some we should be working on the same armies as somebody else is, you know, unless it's something you, you know, you've, you've got to have. So, um, Mitch ended up buying a Norman army, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm not really. I got ton. I mean, I've got tons of Normans. And I mean, like, tons. So I'd be more likely to build probably an Anglo-Norman army, only because he doesn't have Anglo-Normans, and I have, I have enough Normans I can go through there and try to find guys that have, like, longer, um, the longer shirts, the longer chainmail shirts, and build them instead. Um, although I would like to paint some of those Norman shields because they're pretty freaking cool. And, yes, I'd hand paint them. That's the whole point for me. But... Um, but, you know, it's good to give each other some space and stuff like that. So, you know. Um, uh, stray hair flying around here. Hello. What you got there? Part of soup that Linga doesn't want. What is this? Just the... Oh, soup? Yeah. It's just no broth. You don't want it the broth. Okay. All right. Don't mind if I do. Thank you. I'm always up for more food. The real addiction. Food. Watch a documentary on Normans. Very interesting. Yeah. It was really, really interesting. I know I've brought this up before, but people in the UK, their attitude towards the Normans. As an outsider, I'm always interested in whoever looks the coolest. Um, so I would always quote unquote, be on the side of the Normans as opposed to the Anglo-Saxons because the Normans had, you know, cavalry and stuff like that. And, you know, not because they won. Usually I actually prefer the underdog. But, um, yeah, just looking at it from the standpoint of the English. So I always viewed the Anglo-Saxons as the invaders as well. I mean, the, I don't know, it's all relative, I guess. It's all relative as well. I know, I had one friend of mine who, like, hated anything nor, anything Roman. Like, all oh, the Romans were the worst. I'm like, well, not compared to whoever they fought. It just depends on your viewpoint. I mean, I've said this before. All these nations that we play in this silly game are all terrible establishments. <laughs> <laughs> during this period by today's standards but <laughs> all right let's do a little bit of the yeah he would not he would not play Romans I'll play anybody just a game. Thank goodness it's just a game.
curiosity stream. I don't know. Oh well, there's no broth to get in the paints. That was uh, it was no broth. It was just uh, noodle. It was just chicken noodles with no uh, broth. And it's gone now, because I just can't sit there and eat things little by little. I'm like, it's time to eat. Let's eat. And then it's like, food gone. Good. <laughs> Where did the white go? Am I shedding? Man, I'm not that old. <laughs> Let's see here. That's a white's down here. Hey, what's up there, wardrobe? Todd. I was like, who are you? <laughs> I didn't realize that name that, because um, I know the war, obviously you're not a warmonger, you're a war gamer. And robe, I didn't realize the robe is because you wore a robe a lot. You can't wear a robe in Florida. It's way too hot. It's way too hot for everything. Actually, we had our first cool morning. It was 54 degrees this morning. People pulled out their fur coats. I'm sure someone did. Um, I wish it was 54. I can handle it being hot in the daytime. I just can't handle those 78 degrees at night still with over 80% humidity and bugs everywhere. It's just miserable. I mean, I say people, when they colonize this place, must have, they must have come from a real shithole <laughs> to stay here with no air conditioning. I'm, geez, I mean, come on. There's not that much. There couldn't have been that much gold here that they wanted to. <laughs> this swamp ass land. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's 54 this morning. That's my favorite day of the year. The first cool morning. The next favorite day of the year is that day where it starts cold in the morning and then throughout the day it gets colder. You know, when a front comes in, yeah, I like that. That's good. I like those days. There's only a couple of them a year. Not more than two or three. We stopped getting lightning storms every and, and rain every single day, so that, that's an improvement. Oh, we get to paint a happy little shield. That's cool. Less than a hundred today. It's less than a hundred here too. Yeah, but you guys don't have any humidity at all. <laughs> and immediately I thought of the whole skit that Sam Kennison used to do about the Ethiopians and moving out of the desert and giving them a U-Haul instead of food. <laughs> Oh, man. Old Sam Kennison. Yeah, we'll use this. World War II, German World War II beige camouflage. Again, I don't know what German camouflage would be this color. Only thing I could picture is this would be the base color of the Zeltbahn. The Zeltbahn, for those guys that you don't know, is a little like a tent quarter that the Wehrmacht usually carried um, and rolled up on part of their equipment on their back. And it's got a splinter type camouflage. Um, and this is like the base color of what it is. So that's, that's what I'm going with is this what it is. 
She just called it Zeltbahn, you know, Zeltbahn base. We'll use this color for a shield. I don't like it, I can change it later. No big deal. Again, just move forward. I'm not gonna I'm not going to seal and varnish these guys until they're all done. So if there's something on there I don't like, I just don't want to spend, you know, an hour cogitating about what color I'm gonna be. I don't want it to have a little bit of a reddish tinge because I'm going to make his hair and beard be that reddish tinge. So that way it'll pop and differentiate between the two, so. I don't frequently have to repaint something that I'm not happy with, but I'm prepared to do so if it comes down to it. All right, what's this notification? Is it anything? Nope. Okay. Nothing, all right. Let's see. I guess the internet's working okay, not uh, buffering too bad. I didn't do anything different. You know, it, this is the thing about technology stuff that I don't like. The whole issue that if you guys missed it earlier, I, I shot a, a video uh, on Monday. We did a game video and normally uh, when you film something on my phone, and it was, it was similar to on the old phone as well, as soon as you hit 33 minutes, boom, it shut off and created another video. So if you're, say, shooting constantly for like two hours, you'll have one that runs 33 minutes, and at 66 minutes, from 33 to 66 is another one, and then from 66 to 99 is another one, and then, you know, and so forth, and then eventually you'll have a little bit at the end. So when you put the video together, you end up just... Boom, boom, boom. You just put all the pieces together and it makes one, uh, when you go in the editor, it makes one solid video. The other day on Monday, I look at it and I'm like, oh shit, I only have one video file. It didn't record, but this time the video file was like three and a half hours long. So for whatever reason, it decided that now it could do an entire video in its full length instead of chopping it up every three every 33 minutes. I don't know what the hell changed, whether it was a phone upload up, update or something like that. But, um, you know, I'm all for it because I didn't want it chopped into 33 minute bits to begin with. But, you know, it's a mystery. It's a mystery of the internets. So, um, I am not programmed to be that curious and worry about how it happens. It just happens and, uh, you know, and I just move on. Lighten this up a little bit. What you're going to take is jacket, and we're going to add some highlight to that as well.
little bit more. Yeah, we're gonna have to add some white to that. So he's got a jacket on, but he's got no shoes. Oh, he's looking his Sunday best. You guys tell me I was off camera. Hmm. Now we got to do his hair. All right, where's the black cat? There it is. All right, let's go do this. Red haired hairedness. Wow, everybody left. Must have been dinner time. <laughs> well, one person left. Darker color. Let's use the big brush, go to something smaller.
You're back. I didn't know you left. Huh. Don't leave me, man. Don't leave me. One more day left. One more day left. Then we can really get some painting done. comes the yawning. You know what? I want to check and see if there's some coffee made. We'll come back and do um, do him. I'll be right back in a little bit. I got to get rid of some of these cups anyways. Or I can't find my desk here. Uh, we'll keep this one. Let's get rid of this soup and this soda can. Be right back, folks. Okay, coffee supposedly being made. Oh, there's just as many people that aren't here as before. Awesome. Uh, oh, you got a call from your boss. I'm glad I don't get calls from the boss here. Oh, I can't check that right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, we're gonna need to lighten up this orange, uh, this orangish color. I don't wanna use white. We'll use, um, this should be fine. This golden yellow, which is a misnomer. I would've called this uh, pale yellow, but golden yellow is what the, the Vallejo gods decided to call this. Don't need them. Don't need much. Yeah, I'm already getting taken over by by um, by paint things, by paint bottles. Let me put them back. Whew, okay. This with the yellow. There we go, that's what we want.
<sighs> I went to sleep last night at, oh, right after I got off this, so like, what, around 9 o'clock? 9.30? Yeah, I couldn't take it anymore. Couldn't do it anymore. All right, let's highlight in a little bit more. A little bit more. Beards tend to be lighter than the rest of your hair. I think. I think there's a pattern. I tried to grow a beard for a little bit. It's just too much trouble. I gotta shave every day instead of every second or third day. I can't have all that stuff on my neck. But I had a lot more white hair in my beard than I do in my hair, so. Maybe that's just me. It'll be this guy too. I think that's what we're gonna go with. Is there anybody else that's oh we got another red-headed guy here? Yeah, that should work fine. Okay. Uh he's got a shirt underneath. Um I'm originally gonna paint like flesh. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think um I think I'm paint some off-white type color. This guy's not made of money, so. Let's, uh, let's just use white and darken it with, what do you got out here? That's not gray. This a lot? I don't even know what color this is. Oh, this might be like the leather brown. Let's do that. Okay, we'll add some more white to it. A little bit more. Okay, this guy's, this guy's done. What do you got left? We got this turd. I don't like this figure. I have him in my other army. I have him in this is Aloy. I don't like him. I'm gonna replace him. Enough of that guy. Uh, this guy's a new figure. Cool. Welcome. <laughs> Meet the figures. <laughs> All right, before we get started with this one is. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, we got a question. Awesome, that keeps me awake. Doug Sessoms. I hope I said that right. Hello, Doug. Welcome. Hey, Tony, really enjoy your DBA videos. What 
two armies would you recommend for a beginner and where can I buy the armies in the USA? Thanks. Um, well, I would recommend, uh, what period are you interested in? Because DBA kind of covers a big era. So um, what, um, what time period interests you? Because there's no point in me recommending an uh, ancient army and you're interested in medievals. Um, give me a little bit of work on. And, um, and we'll go from there. In the U.S. Um, yeah, the shipping within the U.S. is now a lot better than the shipping overseas. And it's now no fault of the folks overseas. Uh, I've said it before, I usually get better service from people in the UK shipping across the pond to us than the people on this side. But uh, that's not the case anymore. It's factors out of their out of their control. So um, ancient. OK, interested in ancient. Well, you know, the thing I always recommend, and i got to be careful, I recommend it all the time. People take me up on it, or the whole world is going to be populated full of this, these same two armies. But, um, you know, if you're looking for people that are interested in, you need to do things that other people at least have heard of. There's so much stuff in there that is not um, common uh, known armies. But my first recommendation would be Polybian, Roman, and Carthaginians, uh, because everybody knows about Hannibal. And everybody knows about Rome, and um, that would be my suggestion. Now, who makes pre-made armies? Uh, I assume you don't want to buy them by individual. The only people that do in 3.0, uh, well, the first one that comes to mind of those two would be um, would be Essex. And um, there is a company called, I hope I don't get this wrong, I believe it's called C&B Miniatures. They're in the Pacific Northwest somewhere. Maybe they're in Washington State, something like that. They come to Historicon, and they're the, I don't know if they're the official Essex distributor in the United States, but uh, they seem to have uh, the most amount of things there. And um, they don't carry a whole lot of army packs when they come to Historicon They've in the past. They've, they might bring eight or nine of them. Uh, of course, there's, you know, hundreds of DBA army packs, but um, that's where I would start. That's where most people start is with Essex because they don't want to try to figure out um, individual figures and stuff like that. And their Essex figures are kind of middle of the road, um, uh, middle of the road quality wise. Um, you know, my only gripe with uh, Essex is, is that uh, uh, sometimes the figures all kind of look the same, like they all have the same type face. But, you know, it's not like it's a bad face or anything. They paint up well enough. Um, and they don't have any extra figures, uh, you know, where you're trying to... You don't want to get somebody who's new to it to buy a bunch of Roman figures. And they need 20 of them and they're left with 30 extra. So that eliminates that problem. Um, but, yeah, that's what I would recommend because if you get any new players, people... Everybody knows about Carthage. Uh, the other thing you could do is also do Greek stuff, um, but invariably the Greeks, the Greek versus the Greek, like a Spartan Athens, is pretty good too. Everybody knows about them. The problem is, is you don't have so much variety of uh, of uh, of uh, troop types um, that they have. So um, let's go ahead and paint this guy's uh, lino while we're while we're talking about his uh, his shirt, his saffron shirt, the man in the saffron shirt. Uh, the mystery series uh, and uh, we're gonna mix this guy instead of with black like we did the other one we're gonna use where is the German SS camouflage black which is really a really dark brown so we'll do that um, that's what I would recommend it's just the easiest for people to, to do it now I didn't do it that way um, but I'm, I was already uh, an experienced miniatures person and I ended up buying uh, my first army was feudal Spanish and because um, I wanted to paint my people first, that was the big draw for me. And um, I decided to do feudal Spanish. And I ended up going about it by buying every single pack by every single manufacturer that made feudal Spanish at the time and um, made my own 
army composition because it's a feudal army, so you don't want them looking the same. With Romans, you legionnaires, you want them all to be dressed dressed out in the same equipment and stuff like that. It makes the most sense. Um, I have a whoop, I have a Polybian Roman army, and um, all of my Hastati look the same. All of my uh, Principes look the same, and all of my Truarii look the same. They're all in the same color scheme, and um, one cavalry stand look one way, and then the command one looks a different way. So, um, you know, they all kind of go together, and, uh, you know, this stuff is supplied by the state, so, you know. Um, yeah. Got the rules, the Senate and I are looking forward to playing. Okay. Where in the states are you? Unless you happen to be overseas but want to buy them from the United States anyways. <laughs> I'm sure that's not the case. Uh, over, the overseas um, is adding, uh, the COVID is adding drama to the, the shipping. Uh, used to be from the UK to the US almost consistently exactly one week. So if you ordered something on a Monday, you'd get it the following Monday, which is, I think, pretty quick. Now it's who knows what you're going to get. Um, well, I got a book the other day and it got here in like four or five days. So that was like uh, stellar, but uh, I wasn't counting on that. Um, North Carolina. Okay. North Carolina, which is actually south of us <laughs> in Florida. <laughs> oh, I hope you know what that means. <laughs> North Carolina is more the South than Florida is, but um, yeah, I, be, I believe they're called C and B miniatures, and they um, they they are the U.S. distributor, so to speak, of um, of Essex stuff. Now, if I'm buying a bunch of weird things, um, I would order right from the manufacturer because I would hate to. Um, let's say I'm ordering like six or seven different packs and I need them all to get started. I'd hate to get only three of them and it doesn't do me any good. So um, who's better than the manufacturer to do that? So um, you might want to compare if the uh, who has the better price, if that's, a, if that's an issue for you. Because sometimes the, the, the distributors in the U.S. will mark their prices up to include that shipping from the U.K. in it. I'm not saying that they do, but, um, you know. Uh, it's just something to consider. So now the Carthaginian army is, I don't know how old your son is. Um, I suspect he's not in his twenties or something like that, but uh, the, the Roman army is much easier to play than the Carthaginian army. So um, the Carthaginian army is actually a very difficult army to play because um, uh, against the Romans, uh, not very difficult. It's just very challenging for them to, to get a win. Remember it's uh like I tell people, Hannibal made the army. It wasn't that army that made Hannibal. So, um, but um, it is a classic matchup, and the one I usually recommend people to try first because everybody's heard of them. Sixteen, yeah. So, yeah, I would recommend that matchup over, you know. Ask him if that stuff interests him, because there's no point in him um, not interested at all in, uh, in ancient stuff and, uh, and then doing ancient, so. Um. But that's the classic matchup, especially since the name of the rules are in Latin, which means Romans, right? So, you know. <laughs> With that said, I don't play Romans very often because they're kind of a they're kind of a one trick pony. They're a strong one trick pony. There's nothing wrong with them. They they can pretty much handle everybody. Um, but you know, they don't have a lot of cavalry.
actually bought the Lidco Miniature Bases 15 millimeter DBX base set. They make a set of just the, okay. You're not talking about the measuring tools, are you? But uh, I can't recommend Lidco enough. I, I really can't. Um, they work for me. Some people like metal stands. I don't, I don't want the sharp corners that can catch on things and, uh, and can get scuffed up from play. Uh, wood is going to hold the paint a lot better than, than a metal base. That's the, that, uh, you know, can scuff up, but I would use them if I have an alternative. I was fortunate that when I started, uh, doing this DBA stuff in 2004, Litco was already out and was prevalent. So it was a no brainer for me. But had I been somewhere, uh... no, the plywood bases. Yeah, of course. That's that's what I use. That's that's what I base all my stuff on. So um, I just got some in uh, on Monday. I had to restock. This is my bag of uh, Lithgo goodness. That's, uh, I'm a disciple of Lithgo. <laughs> Uh, but I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not. I don't want to be sponsored by anybody. I want to say. My, I want to say what's on my mind. So, <laughs> you know, like I said, oh, we're going to sponsor you. Well, we don't want you using the three millimeter ones. We want the. We want you to use the 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 uh, one uh, one and a half millimeters. And I could tell them, no, I'm not going to use them. I like the three millimeter ones. Damn it. <laughs> You guys deserve the truth. Some I I promote somebody and they start doing a crap job and sending orders wrong. I want to tell you, hey, they're no good anymore. They need to get QC on there. They need to get their QC together. Not well. I guess I better just shut up because they're buying my bases. <laughs> no, I've never had a problem with it. As a matter of fact, I got an email from him. Uh, after I placed the order and he said, Hey, I noticed you're a repeat customer. Thanks for the business. And, you know, I told him, yep, I, uh, I, I love using you guys and I always am good mouth in you. And, uh, you know, I don't want anything in return. I just figured he needed to get some good news, you know, and this, these times everybody could use some good news, you know, everybody can use that. So, so this guy's got a cape. He thinks he's some kind of path ass superhero. Um, I think I'm going to do one that's slightly green, not very much, but just to give it a little bit of inkling there. Now, i got to be really careful because I don't want this guy to look like Kermit the Frog. And the other thing about the greens, these greens are watery as crap, big time. So I want to make sure I don't get one of those. I do have the measuring set also. Okay, cool. I don't. Um... I just didn't get around. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, yeah, there's stuff. If you have the one that's plastic, it's almost like clear plastic. Those are really, really cool because they almost look like they're illuminated when the light hits them. They almost look like they're battery powered, like it's got something in there. Now let's check this green and see it's not too watery. It is. Okay. I don't want to deal with this one today. Okay. I've used it before. That's that joker right there. Let's use a different green. It's not so watery. I'm going to mix it with black anyway, so. Oh, no, not this one. This is, well. Nah. Nah, I don't want to have to tinker with it that much. I can make that one work. Thank you. We'll use this one that's called black green. I mean, I could make this color if I needed to. I'll just kind of use it as a base so that I don't have to try to mix everything from ground zero. Just from a time saving saving standpoint. Oh, these are good. So I think that a lot of the Vallejos that I got were really old on the shelf already. This is one of the newer ones. This one almost certainly came from Hobby Lobby. And um, who is the place I can... Um, 
I can get them from here locally. And um, they don't have a huge selection, but they have some, some of the main colors. So um, these, these are almost like a, a different formula and it's a much better one than the original one. So um, yeah. Okay. Ooh. Way too green. Let's see. Maybe I just went about this wrong. Well, we'll see. I can work my way out of it. I know what I need to do. Let's just go ahead and apply this. This dark shade here. You guys will see what I'll do. See, I'm not worried about painting. I can paint my way out of anything. I've done it enough. You know, and if I just fly out, don't like how it is, and I need to punt. It's not difficult to just cover over. I'm applying this paint so thin that, you know, it's not like I'm going to cover over any de detail. So that's never a problem. All right, so what we're going to do is to lighten up. We're going to go ahead and just start. A, we're not even going to go to the core color. We're going to start lightening up from here. Okay. Um, You joined the stream late. What size brush are you using? I don't know. Um, this is a 10-0 spotter, but as you can see, it's not very thin. So the size brush doesn't really matter so much because it depends on the size tip you're using. So um, the ones usually that I that I find that work the best are either zeros or ones that are um, that uh, are liners. Um, but I just these are just cheap. Um, uh, what is this called? Uh, golden Taquan stuff, synthetic ones that you can get at like Walmart or something like that. I don't use expensive brushes. There's nowhere here in town to get them. And I'm not going to or mail order a brush sight unseen because I usually will buy uh, packs of brushes like this. These are plaid. Folk art, plaid? Are they both the same? Ah, they're similar companies. Oh, okay. It says full cart, but it's Plaid Enterprises. So, uh, you know, and uh, and usually get a mixture of brushes. And, you know, you get 10 of them, and they're like 40 cents each by the time you do the math. This is like $4 a pack. So, you know, if you get a dud or something in there, you don't worry about it much. But um, I would buy an expensive brush if there was an art store that would carry them and I could like see it and see that it had the right tip just to try it out. But hell, they're like 10 bucks a piece and you could get one like this one and it would piss me off because this kind of sucks. Um, but the brush size that's printed on there doesn't mean anything. This is a 10-0 spotter and this is a 10-0 liner. So see the liners, the liners tend to be thinner um, so they're, I think they're better for faces and stuff. Um, but then this one's also really thin and this is a 10 0 round and this is an O round and this one has almost as good a pit point as the 10 0. So you just have to look at the brush and, and roll with it. Um, I've been known to use ones and zeros that to do faces sometimes. It just depends on the brush, which brush you get. So. Um, all right, so we're going to take this. We're going to take this color here, which we have right here, and we're going to go ahead and start lightening it up. We're not going to go. We're not going to add any more of the green. So we have this yellow somewhere, don't we? All right, so let's just do a test run here. Let's um, let's see what kind of a color we get with the yellow, and I don't mind that so much. Um, I think that's what we're going to do. Is we're going to take this color that we have here, and we're going to add a tiny little bit of yellow of this light yellow and and then go over the folds with that because these tints cost a lot of money and this guy doesn't have shoes so you know back you had emergency after two critical fails Oh boy, I don't want your job. That's just too many, too much chaos.
but it sounds like you could do some of it while you're in your own home, so that's kind of cool. All right, let's add a little bit more of that yellow. That was on the paint table. You had a critical fail on the paint table? Uh-oh. That's no good. I fortunately don't have critical fails at home. Knock on wood. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not superstitious. Man, there's a lot of people out there that are superstitious. Any of you guys superstitious? If you are, man, sucks to be you. I'm not. People are like super superstitious about dice. Crazy. You lost the entire Nuln oil bottle. Oh, shit. Where am I located? I am in Gainesville, Florida. So I have lived here since 1981. So this is where, as I like to call, this is where DBA Mecca happen, is. Um... I'm fortunate that I've cultivated a group of folks that um, uh, that really like DBA as much as I do. So, you know, you need other people. You could be the best player in the world or be the most excited, but if, you know, if nobody wants to play with you or people like other systems, you're kind of up a creek. So, um, yeah. We, the problem we have, I'm sure you've watched my videos, but the problem we have is we have too many people that sometimes show up and we can't film. Otherwise, we'd film every week. Our normal filming day is Mondays. And uh, we were fortunate last Monday that we didn't have too many people. And um, the problem with too many people is too many people talk. Uh, it just invariably happens and it, and it really can degenerate this, the gaming situation into something that uh, I don't want to put out on the internet because it's just, sorry, you know, we still have a good time. It's not like we get into fights or anything, you know, but, uh, you know, four is really any more than four, you've got a, you got a problem. Um, so... And I prefer to film than not to film. Because a lot of really cool things happen, and we really want to share that with the, you know, with the rest of the world, and you know, and that's all. We didn't pass through North Carolina this year because, you know, Historicon was canceled. So, but normally we pass through uh, North Carolina. North Carolina. North Carolina is the one that has changing speed limits every every so often. You know? hey, let's go fifty five. No, it's sixty five. No, it's seventy. No, it's back down to fifty five. No, it's holy crap. And South Carolina is the one that has no cell phone service worth a damn. <laughs> they have it. It's just, you know, piss poor. So. <laughs> yeah, with this, we were planning on, on the way up, we were going to stop and see the battleship down in Wilmington. Um, so, you know, obviously that didn't materialize. We didn't, we didn't make that trip, so. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to you too, right? Just pick a speed and leave it. 
I'm a cruise control fan, so it's like, you know, I don't want to be, you know, I got better things to do to worry about, you know, up and down, all around, you know. And I don't like this. I don't like the speed. I like to not worry about it. I like to just leave it on two or three miles over the speed limit. And, you know, and I just forget about it unless I'm coming up on somebody that like a truck or something like that, that I need to get around and we'll floor it and then go back to my speed that I was going at before. But Okay, so this is what we got. We got, uh, he's not very green, you see? It's kind of a, a dull color, and that's what I kind of want him. Let's compare him to the next guy that I just painted. Yeah, they're still dull colors. We don't want these guys to be, you know, super bright. Bright tints cost lots of money. This guy has no shoes, so, you know. Um... Yes, I'm sure there's rich people running around barefoot, but I don't think this is guy's one of them. All right, so let's go do our flesh mix now and uh, on him. You're about 60 miles from Wilmington, okay? Let me, uh, let me go do a coffee check, see if the coffee's ready. Yeah, right back.
Okay. A little bit longer than expected, but... Man, you guys are like captivated looking at nothing happening. Sorry about that, folks. Just needed to get some coffee in me so we can get the ball rolling here. I don't want to poop out like I did yesterday, so you guys are helping. I appreciate it. Um, no shoes. Are you painting ACW? Only the Southern troops, right? <laughs> no shoes. No pants either. These guys are just wearing a long shirt and I guess it's flopping around or something. I don't know. All right, let's uh, see if we've got any of these colors left. I don't want to put, I know the sunny skin tone is still okay. This uh, leather, let's put this stuff away. I'm not going to be able to find myself here. Red leather. Red leather is the color we're talking about. Let's put these colors away. Now I look at these pictures of people that have their painting areas, and it's just like a crazy chaos. I don't know how they, you know, I mean, I'm not a neat freak. I'm a neat freak about this because otherwise I get distracted and I don't get anything done. But, man, I just, I don't know how people get things done. But yeah, this is this is my painting area. I have these little cardboards in case I have a spill. It'll spill on here. They never do. Uh, I did have one this year, but it, it, you know it caught it all here. Uh, and then I've got my cutting mat that I don't cut on um, because you know I don't want it to get all. I didn't even pay for this one. This one came from work, and uh, I commandeered it from work, and I still don't cut on it. And then I've got a protective thing from uh, like a like a dust protector thing. It's just totally rubber. It's clear rubber. And then the dust underneath it. So um, and it's not an expensive desk. I just don't want it to look like crap. You know, I, want, I don't want to ever have to buy another one. So, you know, this is going to last uh, as long as I can get away with it. So it wasn't expensive or anything. It was just uh, compliments of Ikea. So uh let's see here uh, da, 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 da. anyway to contact you for dba advice been watching your videos for a long time and want to get started playing thanks any way to contact me for dba advice through facebook is the easiest way um that's the best way if you got dba advice is go to facebook and get on one of the two dba groups um because you get a really fast response so Hopefully you're not one of those people that doesn't do Facebook. If, if you don't do it, just get on it just for the DBA groups. Um, and you can just ignore all the political nonsense and people pulling each other's hair and all the other stuff that goes on. Um, but I think it's very useful for, for wargaming. Facebook is. It's, um, it's, I, I find wargaming is very picture heavy. Um, you're going to want to share pictures of things you've done. You're going to want to see other pictures of people done. And the bulletin boards just can't support that. Um, I used to go way, way back in the day on the miniatures page all the time. And it just turned into people arguing about food, hot dogs, politics, you know, stuff that was not, uh, not war game related. And it was very difficult to post pictures on there. So I eventually never, I don't go there anymore, you know, um, you don't have that stuff in the two DBA groups. There used to be only one DBA group. It was the DBA and hot uh, wargaming. And then some genius came up with, hey, let's make a, a group for just DBA. So it's like, damn it. Now I got to post the stuff in two different groups instead of just one. So, you know, I wish they hadn't done that. But that's why I don't have a DBA group for like our Florida DBA crowd because it's just not worth it. I mean, it's just... It's, it, it, I'd rather people than our local group like, hey, why don't you join the big one? And you, you know, it, it's a specific enough game system that you need the collaboration of people from the UK and Australia and points in between to um, to, to play regularly. But um, yeah, we'll be happy to help you. But um, that's that's a good place 
um, to uh, post stuff because sometimes I'm not available, you know, so, um, and I don't have all the answers, you know, we just play a lot. Um, and uh, as much as I play DBA, I still feel like I know more about painting than DBA. And uh, I'm getting close to playing my 2000th DBA game, but, um, you know, we still get shit wrong. Uh, somebody mentioned in the other video that, uh, well, I wasn't playing, but uh, one of the players ended up going two turns in a row. Uh, well, the other player didn't notice, so, you know, it's their turn to watch them. I'm, uh, I'm having a, uh, an adult beverage while I'm not playing and comment, uh, commentating in the background, but usually not even looking at the board when we're doing that, so. Hey, it happens, you know. It's, uh, it is just a game, so. We try to do the best job we can, but, you know. Mistakes were made and mistakes will continue to be made. We're human, unfortunately, but that's just how it is. Oh, this, this joker is another guy with eyeballs. What a crazy person, you. This guy might actually, I think this guy's actually supposed to be a Welshman. The miniature is, or the miniature is, 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 um, considered a Welshman, but the Welsh army has a bunch of fast pikes and this guy's spear, uh, javelin, whatever, looks like a javelin isn't, uh, I wouldn't call that a pike at all. So, uh, I think he's better suited for being one of these Irish auxilia. So that's why I commandeered him as such. All right, that's the first coat on this. So let's go to a smaller brush. Well, actually, we need to find the most detailed one I got. I think it. I think it is the zero round. Maybe. Oh no, the the tips of them kind of get scuffed up after a while. But we're gonna we're gonna go with this one. Do we have any white that's alive? Because that's what we need to do is we need to do his eyeballs next. Not enough. Let's drop some white there. And we're just gonna paint his eyeballs. It sounds complicated. It's actually pretty easy. You just gotta take it slowly. Make sure you have the right amount of paint on the brush. And not too wet, and not too dry. Basically, try it about a hundred times, and you're going to fail the first ninety-five times. <laughs> that's, what, that's how I was able to do it. Um, paint how you're comfortable with. A lot of painters I've watched people paint. A lot of people do what I call painting in midair. That means they're grabbing their miniature up like this, and they're painting the the miniature, and they're not they're not resting on anything. I don't know how in the I don't know how in the hell they're able to do that. I always have. The figure rested here. I mean, it's not like I don't have a pulse or, you know, that I don't have a steady hand, but, you know, the figure is always resting on the table. I have a table that doesn't move, and my wrist is also resting on the table when I paint. And that works for me, you know. Uh, I don't know how some people can paint in midair. It, it baffles me, you know. But, uh, you know, work, do what works for you. Don't, you know, you don't have to paint a certain way. So. Uh, I think it's time to bring in a new brush. Let's see if we can find a suitable candidate. That's not it. Right, let's open the last pack. Oh, no, there's some hiding in the back. We don't need to open that one yet. Uh, these packs used to last me about a year each, but I'm painting more than I've ever had, so that's not the case anymore. This one, this is, this one's good. I gotta find another supplier of these things cause I'm not gonna be buying these at the place I used to buy them at anymore. They're on my, I'm not gonna shop there anymore list. That's all I'm gonna say. So we're gonna have to see if uh, we can buy these cheap brushes somewhere else. I think between Michael's or Hobby Lobby or whatever we can we could get them there, but. I 
I might even be tempted to Amazon some of them, but. Okay. Yeah, this has got a really good tip. For now, eventually, you know, they, they wear out, they get misshapen. Ah, poo. Let's get a little bit more. Flow action on there. Okay, this guy's got a little piece of lint sticking out that is gonna hit before the rest of the brush is. Okay, I'm gonna do something that's unheard of. I'm gonna cut this little bastard tip off. Now, this is the kind of stuff that comes in handy when I'm painting without my glasses on. I'm naturally nearsighted, which gives me an edge now. I didn't use it to my advantage until like maybe four years ago. And then, you know, turn 45 and then everything goes up. You have to evolve in a different way. I think, that, I think we got it. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. Back to where we were. Okay, got two little dots there. And then we're gonna do the same thing with black and we're gonna throw in a vertical stripe there in the middle of the eye, eye socket. And that's, uh, you do it. Younger muscles. I've never been able to do it. Painting in midair, I don't get it. I just, I don't know how the hell they could do it. Um, it's really uncomfortable to, to try to do something in midair. It's yeah. yeah, whatever works for other people, they can do it their way. Okay. Now let's set that brush off to the side. We're gonna need it for eyeballs. Okay. Uh, right, the flesh mix. All right, so where, where is the one we're starting to work on? Maybe it dried out already. Okay, let's mix us an, up another batch then. I had, um, two weeks ago, I did a painting session on Saturday and I had too much coffee. I had coffee usually when I wake up and then I went out to breakfast and had a couple more iced coffees with the daughter. Came home, wanted to do some more painting. I had too much caffeine in me. I didn't get the jetters. I still had steady hands. The problem is, is I couldn't stand still. I was uh, antsy, like I wanted to not I kept getting pulled off in different directions. So it wasn't that, you know, I, I couldn't hold the brush steady. It was almost kind of like, oh, what's that over there? You know what, you know? So we needed to flush some of that caffeine out of me before uh, I could go backwards. But fortunately, I haven't, had, I haven't ever had any jitter issues and I really don't want that. I've got way too many things to paint. Uh, I'd, rather have, uh, I'd rather have shit your pants problems when I get older 
you know, I could just wear a diaper and you guys won't smell me and I could still paint steadily. So <laughs> I don't want the jitters, please. I don't want that stuff. Uh, <laughs> everybody's got something. I don't want that, please. I'm, I got too many things to paint. I've been enjoying painting a lot more this year than any other year, and a lot of it is just doing stuff like this. You know, um, I don't like painting because it's, it's a solitary thing, but I feel like being able to do it in this format at least gives me some interaction with some other folks, and hey, maybe I can share something that, uh, some insight that uh, may not work for you exactly the way I'm doing it, but at least maybe gives you food for thought, and maybe you can. Uh, uh, maybe look at something in a new way and, and might be able to improve your skills. So I don't know. It helps me. I do it for me. So, you know, I appreciate you guys uh, watching and, uh, you know, and interacting. It's very helpful. Much appreciated. So we I have no plans on not doing this in the future. This is, seems like you know, as they say in uh, The Mandalorian, this is the way. <laughs> this is the way. I was having so much fun here, I forgot that tomorrow's a work day. Damn it! <laughs> Almost there. One more day to go. It's not TGI Friday for me until, uh, T it's not TGIF until after work. So, uh, hey Alan, how you doing? There's another guy that lives in North Carolina. Asheville area, I believe. Hey, it's the Imperator. Chris Brantley, how are you? Listening to your live stream is COVID bomb for me. Good to hear a familiar voice from happier hobby times. Yeah, you guys are you guys are like in serious lockdown up in that uh Ash Vegas. <laughs> um you guys are in serious lockdown stuff up there. Um yeah, you guys have enough problems in your area, even without the all the all this lockdown stuff with all the traffic and stuff. So, yeah, I'm actually not affected by it a whole lot. Um, I don't live in a very big area. I don't really go anywhere. I mean, I, I'm perfectly fine going to work and then coming home. I'm I I want to be home when I'm not at work and. Um, you know, we don't live in a very big metropolitan area and, you know, we got our little small gaming group of people that that's what we do. So it really, I honestly, I honestly forget about it. Um, and then unless we're going to the grocery store and we did the, the shipping the groceries to us for a long time because, um, I just don't want to deal with people telling me what to do. You know, it's too, it's, it, people just gotten too, it's not that people gotten too nasty. Everybody wants to tell everybody else what to do. And, you know, um, it's not that I want to be a rebel or anything, but I leave people alone. I like being left alone. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't mind going to the grocery store, but, but uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't go for a long time. I didn't want some little old lady to say, oh, well, you know, you're going the wrong way down the aisle, even though you're covered and I'd have to light her up. So I figured it's, it's better if I don't go to the grocery store instead of, uh, you know, uh, I see people doing stuff that I don't like doing and I just leave them the hell alone. I'm like, okay, well you do your thing and uh, whatever. I don't need to be on a crusade, but 
Um, other than that, in my daily life, I forget this stuff's going on. Honestly, I'm certainly not stressed out by it or worried. Um, I'd hate to be, I can't imagine these people that are living in dire fear every day, you know. Um, I'm just, my fear is that we're never going to go back to normal no matter what happens. It's going to be another, uh, this is going to be another, uh, uh, like TSA, you know, you're never, I mean, you could kill every single terrorist on the planet and we will never be able to take your loved one to the gate on an aircraft ever again. And it pisses me off. It just, uh, you know, that's just, you know, when you lose your freedoms, it's very difficult to get them back. And it's not that we need that freedom. It's just the principle of it. So, um, but luckily I don't think about it all the time, you know, so, but it has been excellent because I've gotten more painting done than ever before, which is, you know, therapy. Definitely. But definitely. Um, this guy's got a mustache. Cool. I like painting facial hair. And in the last, I, I just touched on a little bit. In the last four years, I've actually, I used to paint in 20-20 vision. I'm, I'm naturally nearsighted. Um, my vision had not changed um, for probably, call it 30 years at all. I was running about a um, negative six and a half prescription, which I guess is fairly nearsighted, but I've had it my whole freaking life. So since I was like seven or eight years old, so it's not a big deal, but you know, I run contacts. So I'd paint in 2020 vision. And it wasn't until like four or five years ago where I realized that I can't see things that are close to me because I'm painting it about maybe eight inches from my face, 10 inches from my face, fairly close because I'm comfortable, you know, propping myself at that distance. Um, and for somebody who's been nearsighted their entire life, the idea that you cannot see something that is close to you, but you can see better when it's farther away is mind boggling. Okay. Because it's always like, I, you know, it's for us is, you know, it's just, okay, you need to get closer to the thing to see it better, or you need to have your, your vision corrected. So, um, about four or five years ago, I, I decided to get, um, I got readers, uh, to be able to, um, focus on the figures because of glare issues. So I went to Walgreens and I got the strongest ones they made, um, which are plus three, tw 325s, which are pretty strong. They're stronger than most little loops or anything like that. And I used these for a while until I realized it still wasn't strong enough. So I now just take my contacts out. So I am, um, I'm painting with the equivalent of a plus six and a half. Um, and it's not that I'm painting better because I really didn't need that extra vision, but I'm enjoying, um, say, sculptings and facets of the figure casting that I wouldn't have before. Like, I, I'm just, I don't know, I'm getting into the figure, like the, the faces and stuff more. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's, I don't think that I'm painting better. I'm just enjoying the castings more. So that's kind of cool. I wasn't expecting that. Um, so that has been, uh, that's been pleasant. So, um, Ash Vegas, there's no gambling there. Why Ash Vegas? Um, the weather's going to start getting really nice for you up there. Um, we went there last, um, We, where was it that we went? We stayed for a week in Sapphire, North Carolina, and we took a trip out to Asheville from there. We used that kind of as a base. That was, uh, I like uh, I like the mountains. I don't want to live in them. It just t takes too long to get from one place to another from someone who's a flatlander, okay? But it's definitely pretty. Um, lots of breweries up there. Hopefully, not too many of them shut down because of, of this, but um, yeah, um, what in the hell am I doing? Well, I'm trying to, um, it's
it's about a 10 hour drive for us maybe a nine hour drive it's not too bad i mean hell we drive the historicon which is like 14 hours so um the trick the trick to go on a long drive is leave at four or five and now not four four is a little extreme leave at five in the morning wake up at four pack your stuff get on the car leave at five if you leave at that time it's okay if you leave at 10 o'clock in the in the a.m it's a nightmare it is just a nightmare day so you know it's always good to have a, like a couple hours the first two hours of your trip in the dark and just get the ball rolling um but at least that's what works for uh for me but yeah you leave somewhere to go somewhere at noon and then you drive until mid no 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 no, no. I'm, I'm not a, i'm not a night driver in person that's it's just get bored to bored to death literally fall asleep Sixties for the next week or so. I think I mean you mean high, so the highs is sixties. That's good. Chris says I'm terrible about painting, but I spend my free time organizing my hobby space. Okay, that's good. Just traded in my spinning paint rack for a cube setup like yours and organize the paints by color progression. You know, a year and a half ago, I did not have them organized by color. And I looked at an old picture and I'm like, what in the hell was I thinking? How did I even get by? Because you spent so much time looking for the browns. And it's not that they're in necessarily color progression, but it's like we've got all the greens are over here and all the blues are here and the grays with, you know, just so you can like spend less time looking for stuff. And uh, I don't know how the hell I did it before. I, I, I just, I don't know. But um yeah, what I found, I went to Michael's and got these two things, and they're actually desk organizers, and I put them on their side. They're meant to be um, sitting flat, like on a table, I guess, To but I put them vertically. They're just sitting on the table, and um, and because I actually wanted to get one of those where I slid the little paint bottles in, but there weren't that many manufacturers that were making them when I got these. I think I've got these a couple of years. I've had them a couple of years now. And um, now there's all kinds of manufacturers that make them, but there was only like one manufacturer that made them and they were like really, really expensive, like $50 or something like that for one. And I was gonna have to get several. And I, I'm glad I didn't go that route. And they're white, which matches the paint table. And you know, I'm, I'm really, really happy with my paint setup. Um, it's kind of minimalist and I don't mean that in a bad way, but I don't have extra stuff I don't need. And um, I'm I'm really really happy with it. Uh, I'm really happy with it. The only thing I'm kind of disappointed is this uh, this camera mount. Um, I thought was going to be more useful to put on our game table. But I took it over on Monday, and um, it just it was the wrong. It it didn't go far up enough. I couldn't attach it to the table that was next to it. That is what I normally prop up our tripod on, and. Um, I couldn't attach it to that. So I had to, to attach it to the table that we're actually playing on. And it didn't get enough height to go over it enough. So we just went back to the old tripod system. And that's perfectly fine because I can leave this thing here. Um, um, it's kind of annoying to have to pack everything up from, from, from game to game. Um, Cause you know, I, I gotta pack everything up and at the end of the evening. And sometimes I forget stuff like I did this last time. I left my phone charger over there, but um, I've got other phone chargers. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I'm sure I'm maxed out on phone charge right now. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I think I started in the sixties and now I'm maxed out. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not, I wasn't good about painting until I started filming and filming gives me an excuse to not cut out. I can just stay on here and um, and continue painting. Even if I'm rambling and nobody's paying attention, I'm still staying on task and not getting sidetracked by something I saw on the internet or a video game or, or if I'm watching something on, a, on YouTube, which I, I used to watch a lot on YouTube um, while I was painting, you end up spending, 
you know, sometimes an hour looking for the perfect thing to watch. And the next thing you know, you, you're out of available time to do your painting in. So this just allows me to start filming. If somebody shows up, awesome. Uh, hopefully, because they keep me entertained. We can do some back and forth uh, commentary. Uh, but if not, it keeps me on task to get something accomplished. And uh, yeah, so... Um, I'm, in, I'm enjoying painting almost more than gaming now. Uh, I got these Irish done, or at least in one form, done. And we played with them last night. I'm not excited to play them. I mean, I've already spent a couple hundred hours with them. You know, it's not like I haven't seen them or anything. I mean, I've seen them up close and everything. So, um, yeah, I'm like ready to just start working on the next army. So we got uh, this guy to do and uh, two more. And then we we could go on to whoever happens to be next. I got to I gotta decide in the next, next couple of days. So, um Unfortunately, whoever I decide, I'm going to be stuck with doing them probably for a couple of months. That's about how long it's going to take. I honestly don't know when I... St I guess I can go back and see when I started these Irish, but it seems like I did the Saloy really fast. It was like those... Uh, it was 12... Yeah, 12 figures. It just zipped through them. So it helps if you pick an army that they don't have a lot of uh, equipment on them and they're simple... They're simpleton-looking... Yeah. You just got your ass kicked by a bunch of simpletons. What? No, simple looking. Uh, no, no frills. So, um, I'm betting you'll go Ren. Uh, I'm not. I'm not because I don't want to work on my rules. I, I don't want to work on the Renaissance rules. I, I just not not in this environment that we have. This argumentative environment. Um, I want to paint and Renaissance would allow me to paint, but then I've got to create rules which takes us away from just, no, but it's, it's definitely going to be a book four army. It's definitely going to be a book four. I mean, it may be really close to that period, but, um, yeah, I don't want to work on the rules because the rules are going to be very different in, in many, in, in, not the way they feel when you're playing them, but they're going to have aspects that are very different. And um, I'm not a rules guy. I, I'm I'm I want to I want to research the guys that I'm painting. I want to paint them. I enjoy painting them and and finding figures that have the right look for what I want to do with them. But work, rules are just in the freaking way. I mean, <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Oh man, I just, um, I work on rules. It's going to trigger, it's going to trigger fixing some things that I don't like about these type of games that in my opinion will make them better, but it's, it may instigate me not wanting to play DBA as much. And I don't really want that to really to be a factor. So, um, I'll get there when I, I was going to, uh, that was the catalyst was I didn't, hadn't worked on them because um, I didn't have a computer. I had, until March, I bought, I bought a laptop. I hadn't had a working computer at home for eight years. It just crapped out and I just didn't feel like throwing a couple thousand dollars at it. I was perfectly happy not having one. And uh, then I decided to finally, you know, get one after thinking about it for four or five years. And... Um, I'm glad I did so because that's when this this thing hit and the supply dried up and I'm not gonna buy a computer sight unseen. Um, I wanna lay hands on it and stuff like that. And um, so that worked out really well. Um, but everybody wants to argue about everything. And I'm like, no, I, I, need, I need therapy for this. You know, I don't need to, you know, I don't want to argue about stuff, so, you know, I'll uh, we work on the rules. There'll be rules that I like, and if nobody else likes them, well, yeah, okay, cool, you know, <laughs> that's fine. <clears throat> but 
I'm going to bet they're going to be better. But, uh, you know, we'll do them when it's right and uh, not when it's not. So um, there's definitely some concepts that that are different than, um, than standard DBA thing. And it will not be all-encompassing from... Uh, <clears throat> 1500 to 1700. I'm, I'm not so focused on the later period stuff. I am a 1500s kind of guy. That's the stuff I'm interested in. Um, it's going to be something that works for that period primarily and not try to do something that shoehorns all the other periods in the same thing. So, um, anyhow, enough of that. I don't know when that'll happen, if it happens. So, uh, but I do have lots of figures that I want to paint from that period, so um, I have kind of been skirting the 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 period of you know building the armies lately that are really close on that proximity. So that if I ever decide to go Renaissance, I just have to paint a couple of different stands, and I've got another army for that. You know, so like for instance, um, if I wanted to do uh, Tudor English, okay, Tudor English is not the army that I'm going to do next. But if I was deciding to do Tudor English, um, you know, it'd be really easy to add, you know, a couple of stands and then they could do the early uh, 1500 time period with that, where they, they fought the, uh, the Valois French. Um, so that, that sort of thing. So um, it's all things to consider. So, um, but yeah, I really, I really like the Renaissance period, but. I also would rather do a period where I don't have to supply all the armies. So that's the, that's the problem with that. So, but anywho, um, yeah, I'm digging the paint and stuff a lot more than I did last year. Let's put it that way. Really am. And it won't be a book one army either. One day I may do a book one army. Maybe I'll never do one. Oh well. One of these days, I'm going to build a medieval French army. What is this? The two Harbox have, they each have a Hundred Years War English army. Mitch had one, and then Luke bought one on a super discount. So um, I could morph my my two armies into a medieval French, but, you know, the whole principle, I've got all the knights and stuff to do all them. It just would take for freaking ever to paint them, but that's okay. You just take it one figure at a time, but they also won't be next. Um the problem with medieval French army is you've got to decide what period you're going to do and just realize that some of the stuff is just going to be out of period. You know, are you going to do a, a Creasy time period one? Are you going to do Agincourt? Or are you going to do something in the middle? You know, so um, I certainly wouldn't build three. Um, in all likelihood, if that's what I was going to do, I would probably pick the middle period and then add units in or out to depending on uh, to supplement either an early period or a later period and just deal with the fact that some of the armors are just going to not be um, exactly accurate, you know, because it's such a huge period where uh, things during Creasy look very different than uh, Agincourt to, you know, a trained eye. Um, and I've got the, I've, I've got knights to do either one, but, you know, the thing that keeps me from doing a medieval French army is I know lots of people who have one. Um, and it kind of doesn't suck. And I'm kind of thrilled more on armies that I can use, that you can bulk them up to make them better. You can choose some of the crappier elements and then you can use them like in a Wimp Wars type setting. And uh, you can use like, uh, you can play them lots of different ways. And um, that is... Um, that's kind of an appeal for me right now. So.
Honestly, we're playing a lot more crappy armies than we are the good ones. We're enjoying these Wimp Wars and Saloy Siliasses and things like that more than just bring whatever army you want and we're going to duke it out. We honestly haven't done that much. Um, you could mostly you just end up turning into the same damn army. You know, you got knights and blades and some spears and shooters and that kind of stuff. And, you know, uh, it's nice having a variety of uh, units that have... Um, uh, different factors, especially lower factors, that can certainly, uh, the battles can turn 180 degrees at the drop of a die roll, you know, so. After the DBA breakup, I did my own set of DBX-inspired rules to fix things I didn't like. But someone broke into my house, stole my computer and TVs, I didn't have a backup. Oh, well, oh, shit. Yeah, there's always stuff you're gonna. There's always stuff you're not gonna like. Um, if I make my set of rules, and the test bed's gonna be Renaissance, you know, I don't want to change, you know, medieval set of rules, whatever. But the, you know, anything that's in the current, any rules that you play, that you've had to say when you've explained the rules to someone else who doesn't know them, you've had to say when somebody asks, "Hey, how come?" this is this way it doesn't make any sense and you've had to use the excuse well that's just what the author decided to make it like you throw that shit right out and you come up with a better rule for it so that, because if it doesn't make sense to them it probably doesn't make sense to you um my biggest gripe about any of these set of rules is that you have to have contact that makes perfect alignment and it feels awkward and it feels like you're not really playing a, a military simulation. It feels like you're playing some chess-like mechanism. So that is going to be the very first thing I will break and, not, you know, quote unquote, not put up with, you know. So if you've got one unit, I know these aren't exactly the same size, but we'll just assume that they are. I didn't want to grab my Litgo stands. You know, if you can only do combat like this, that... We'll get the list of stuff out. Anything that's anything that's in the rules where you have to um, compromise, you know, things that make sense is 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 thrown right out. You know, um, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna spend the effort in coming up with rules, if you can't have combat like this, that's that's really difficult to explain to people that are trying to learn the game. Where it's like, okay, well, you've got to line this. Because then you run into the whole, well, how come you you can't make contact like this on the side? And all that crap, that's going to go away. Now, it may mean that um, I'm, we may have to play on uh, a different surface where um, the units can't touch. I don't know. you know. Um, but that's, that's like the first thing to fix. You know? That's the very first thing to fix. I think that um, DBA and other games can stand to have the combat factors and unit factors be more complicated, okay? It can stand to have um, different kind of knights and different factors for different knights and that kind of stuff. That's easy to teach other people. It's easy to remember. It all makes sense if you read history. But this, the contacting and... Um, the the follow ups, all that stuff needs to be much more simple than it is in any of the rules because that's what peop that's what doesn't make sense to people the abstractionness. Uh, I know I that's what I struggled with you know so um, yeah so it's not going to be an easy task um, but it's definitely doable and um, yeah anyhow that's um. There's only a few. There's only a few set of rules that that allow you to actually, you know, hit at angles and stuff. And you know, um, yeah. Anyhow, it's that. So it's not as easy as just add new factors and boom, you got Renaissance. Because it's I'm not going to do all. I'm not going to. I'm not going to get excited about about that if if that's all we're going to do. But it's still going to feel like DBA because you're still going to. Or, you know, or Triumph or whatever it is that you play. We're still going to have pips because um, that's, I think, probably the most crucial thing to anything else. So, um, 
Yeah. So you can't remember any of that stuff? Certainly you remember like the core stuff. The... Yeah. People break it into your stuff, man. It's like if your house is violated. We had some people breaking into cars in our neighborhood and then you come to find out after people because we had like a Facebook group for our neighborhood. And then we find out that it's, oh, well, they didn't really break into people's cars. They were just opening them because people left their cars unlocked. Who in the hell leaves their car unlocked? I don't have anything in my car and I don't leave my car unlocked. Well, I mean, if they just wanted to be a pest, imagine if your car was unlocked and they just said, well, I'm not going to take anything from you because you don't have anything there. But, you know, all your all your uh, paperwork that's in your glove compartment, like your insurance information, I'm just going to steal that. You know what kind of a living hell that would cost for you then <laughs> to get all that stuff back, you know? <laughs> It's just easier to go get a job, dude. Don't steal things from other people. Just freaking get a job and work for it. It's a lot less work. <laughs> oh, man. Anywho. This guy's kind of got a little bit of an Aragorn face to him. I think that's what his name is, right? The guy off of uh, Lord of the Rings? I only saw it twice. Yeah, the Argent... I can't even... Oh, Vigo's character. Aragorn. Yeah, because it's a bastardization of... of Aragorn. <laughs> At least that's what I call it. Bastardization. It's almost the same, but not... Yeah, these wargaming systems need to be easier to explain to newcomers um, because they're just too cumbersome. And that goes for, you know, all of them. So um, not everybody can be uh, devout to spending this much time on them. And I think they all make a good game. They just don't make a good, necessarily a military simulation, or you feel like you're actually moving mounted units or, you know, something like that. So, um, I remember most of my concepts just too bummed out to redo all that work. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. You know, the most important concept, I think, for these games is that it's the size of the game, at least for me. What appealed for me to play these games is that you don't need a lot of figures, and then everybody brings their own figures, and those are the ones you play with. The rules are almost immaterial compared to that. I want to play with my own toys that I brought, that I painted, that I collect, that I fantasize about trying to find the different figures to go with the right units to represent them historically. That's the appeal to me. If you, if you play in a game that has too many units and takes forever and you reach over a table and your back hurts, it just turns into every other game. The fact that you're playing a game that can be over in 50 minutes is really the appeal to me that you're, that you are, hello, um, lost the brush that you are, you know, just a matter of a couple of feet away from your figures and you get to enjoy them and, uh, you know, that sort of thing uh, is the appeal for me. If you actually wanted to simplify the game, take it back to something Father and I could play armies as parallelists or opponents, Hittites, or Antonines, Caesar, Marians versus Gauls. Yeah, then you can make special rules for stuff. You didn't have to, you could make Caesar's uh, Romans different than maybe Romans and something else. You could, you know, you could have like uh, different rules for them that could balance against, them. yeah. Yeah, I could, I could see that. That's, uh, I think the contacting is too difficult in, in any of the rules. 
I, I've looked at Art de la Guerre, too freaking complicated. Same thing. That's the nobody gives a shit about contacting stuff. We want to roll dice. We want people to freaking die. And you know the fact that they can't line up just I think is just really really weird. Uh, I've played. Um, uh, what was that game that um, the one put up by Osprey? Um, Ramp Lion Rampant. I played Lion Rampant. I thought that I thought that was a great game. Um, and you could play it with these size stands and you just mark off casualties and stuff. I thought it was a it had a really neat press your luck mentality. Um, uh, thought behind it. I think the other thing is is that this is these are the only games that I've played where you can't do whatever the hell you want. You've got to roll, and that's how many actions or whatever you get to do. So you, the game isn't bogged down by fog of war, putting the fog of war on top of you as the player. As in, uh, let me. you need to leave the room and talk to the other opponents about what's going on with the game master. It was like everybody sees everything that's going on, but you roll a dice that keeps you from being able to do everything you can do as an and an omnipotent being on the field of battle. Um, and I think that that's a better concept um, uh, than, you know, hiding things that are really happening from you. Being, It's better to allow you to, um, yeah. Yeah, you allow non-alignment, yeah. It, it makes sense, I, you know. I've never played a game as abstract as these. So for me, it's like, what? All right. And it's also why I'm kind of, I'm not opposed to playing other games. I'm opposed to being the point man on playing other games. You know, we got um, we got a couple games into this game called Gaslands. It's a great game. It's an Osprey game with uh, Car Wars. Um, I found out it was coming out, and I'm you know I had that was something that really appealed to me. But um, there's nothing wrong with the rules, and it, there's um, it, there's some really interesting decisions you get to do as a player uh, as the game unfolds. I think that's what makes a good game. Is it you know are you involved? All the time. In other words, not like, okay, well, come get me in 30, 40 minutes when my turn's again. You know, keep the players involved and have them have choices and meaningful decisions that they get to make from turn to turn. If you do those two things, then you have a successful game. And um, that's a really fun game, but I couldn't be the point man on it because I'm like, I'm burned out of rules. I'm burned out about reading rules. I want to paint, which I'm not burned out of. And I want to play the game and, you know, and, and make, you know, funny comments when funny things happen. And, and uh, you know, that, that's what appeals to me, not learning rules and, and try to necessarily manipulate them so that I can win the game. And winning is, is second nature. It's not really that important. Um, so, um, But that's me. Some people want to win all the time. I said, okay. I'd rather win at life than this is just a game. <laughs> it's just a damn game that we're all suffering together through to try to, you know, get your boys to finish. So. Okay. But honestly, I forget this thing's going on here, which I guess is a good thing because there's nothing you could do about it, so. You're just plugging away and stuff and realize there's some people that most people are more screwed than we are because at least we still get together frequently. We're still painting. We're still, you know, upbeat about it. So, you know. Hell, there may not ever be another convention again, for all we know. They may just be, they put, may put too many restrictions on what you need to do and how far away people are in a room and stuff like that. And, and many people just don't want to do it. And some people might be scared to do it to begin with. And they become non-profitable, so they can't 
uh, cover the expense of the hotel room. And, you know, I mean, we, we may be in something totally different that we've never experienced before. So. Um, right. But I'll tell you one thing. From everything I can tell, this COVID has been really good for the war games industry because I understand that they are doing a lot more business than they ever have. Now, some of it may be at the end of it, it's probably not a good thing because um, they have less workers um, because some people aren't able to go to work and stuff like that. But definitely, um, you know, if you go to like uh, Michael's, okay, I was looking for replace one of my craft paint bottles. They're cleaned out. You would have thought a freaking end of the world was happening. There was like no paint. There was the end of the world happening and you could use it and you could solve it by buying paint. Because it was they're out of every paint. Uh you can imagine. Um so yeah, I kind of have to plan ahead a little bit like, okay, I may run out of this. I need to buy another one of it. But um that was just a craft paint. Maybe people are just trying to get crafty that normally weren't. <laughs> yeah. Inventory levels are really all over the place. So. Well. This is a hell of a lot better painting session than the one I had yesterday where I went to bed about now. So at this point, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get this guy done. That will leave us two, two guys that worst case scenario, they'll get done Sunday morning. Because I know Sunday morning I should be able to paint for like four hours straight. So certainly we can knock those two guys and then we can start talking about the next, whatever the next army is gonna be. Mm -mm -mm. Where did aha? We're over here. Got it. Expect more smaller regional one to two game days conventions to pop up during the two, three year transition back to normal. Yeah. I don't know if it's gonna I don't know if it's gonna be two to three years. I think it could be longer. Um we cruise every year. And we didn't cruise last year. We didn't cruise last year. Or did we? I don't remember if we did or not. But anyhow, we were going to do a summer one to Europe. And uh, obviously that didn't happen. And we are booked on one in December. And that probably wasn't going to happen. But, you know, it's not that big of a deal because it's like I realize it's probably not going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, you're not heartbroken. You know, it's like when you're like, oh, this is going to be in like tomorrow. And then it doesn't happen. It's like, what the? I planned all this work and, you know. But the problem I'm having is, is I've got a lot of days to take off. I can't carry over and I've got nothing to spend them on. I'm not going to just take a day off just to take a day off. Um, I don't know. Um, there, hell, there may not be another cruise for 10 years. How's that industry going to survive? You know? I luckily I don't have uh, I don't have any of those issues at work. I pretty much stay away from everybody, which is great. I don't want to see anybody at work, but <laughs> um, and uh, you know I already have to wear PPE in in the workplace, so you know luckily I'm not forced to wear any more of it. Uh, I don't really get close to people. I don't have people sign paperwork. Perfect, and um, you know I'm good. 
but there's some folks who work in the food industry that may always have to be covered up all, all from now on all the time. How do they feel about that? Maybe it's time they need to find a different industry to work in if they don't uh, if they don't like that. So I I don't know. I don't see any end in sight anytime soon. So uh, luckily I'm not affected by it very much. So I count my blessings now. And like I said, I'm getting a shitload of painted. Well, for me. Yeah, this is the only hobby thing I'm doing. I took all of my hobby energies and they're all in this now. So maybe they should have always been in this all the time. So that's uh, that's kind of a good thing. Where are we? Where are we? Where's the white? Did the white disappear? But if something were to happen and I stop manufacturing miniatures for a while. I got plenty to keep painting for, you know, the rest of my life, so I'm good. <laughs> I got plenty of stuff to do here. And like I said, I bought the computer at the right time. All right, we still have some of this metallic color down here alive and kicking. Let's see, because that's what we're going to put on. Yep, yeah, we do. Just a little bit on the end. It's either a short spear or a javelin. Well, it's javelin now with this guy. That could be either one of them. He's just an auxiliary guy. He's just an auxiliary fellow. All right. Uh, this guy looks like we're going to make him blonde. And that's good because we only have only one other blonde guy in there. So it's time for a blonde mix. All right. All right. We're going to do... That's right, I need to just go to Hobby Lobby and just buy these new colors because these old Mark I Vallejo colors are just, they're super watery and unpredictable. I could, I could mix them, I can put those, the, the, the mixing uh, stainless steel balls in there and it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. I need to just write down what they have there and, and replace some of these. And um, it just reminded me of that. Uh, What's this one here? We've got a flat earth or something like that around here. Let's find Mr. Flat Earth. We've got a flat earther. <laughs> uh, is it this one? Yeah, it's US Field Drab. I do with a flatter. Let's see. Doesn't have to be that color. Well, 
now it's not going to be. We're going to use Monster Brown. I'm not a fan of these war paints. They're little on the... They, they lack pigment that I'm used to, so... Um, but we'll make it work. The Danish paints, right? Yep. The Danish paints as opposed to the Spanish paints. Yeah, these are a little bit more like craft paints from the standpoint of uh, uh, the acrylic um, fluid compared to the pigment. Um, seems like it to me. All right. But I have a fair amount of them. Uh, just for different color variety. All right, we're going to go with this and paint all of his hair in this color. All of his hair. And he's got a mustache too. Not forget that. All right. This is the color that we had here. So let's um, let's add a little bit more of that. And if he ends up being a light brown haired guy and not a truly blonde, then that's fine too. We're just kind of you know, winging, winging most of this anyway, so. It's not like he has to be, he has to look a certain way. A lot of it is just, uh, see where it takes you. See where you go with it. Okay, let's lose this brush, which is too big. No, I can't get in there and do what I want to do. And let's add some of this yellow here to... Now, the nice thing about these figures is these are optional elements in the medieval Irish army, but they're mandatory elements in the Anglo-Irish army. The Anglo-Irish army has to have three units of fast auxilia. So just by painting these guys, they automatically are able to do double duty in the other army, which, you know, are the main enemy of the medieval Irish is the... the the, the Anglo-Irish. So, you know, uh, they're, because the native Irish split both ways, some of them stayed with their, you know, fought for their, uh, their, uh, their Anglo-Norman uh, overlords. And some of them decided to uh, join the, uh, the actual clans and fight. So they go, they're batting for both teams. But the fact that I can use them as uh, some of the foot troops in the uh, Anglo-Irish army is handy because um, they could see battle on the opposite side of the, um, 
of the medieval Irish. So there are three more stands that I basically can use for another army that uh, are an enemy of the um, of, of the uh, of the uh, medieval Irish. So. And of course, you could do civil wars with medieval Irish as well, fighting each other, but uh, I'm not going to build two same armies for a civil war. I don't even like doing civil war scenarios that are bordering on boredom. So, um, All right, let's add a little bit more white to that. And bring it up a notch here. Got a drop. Have a great night. Okay. You too, Chris. Take care. Stay safe. We're gonna put some, just some streaks in here to kind of give them some highlighting. Okay, and what I've been doing with the shields is, since I don't know exactly what I'm going to do for a detail on them at this point, I've just kind of been painting them a solid color and leaving them until the end. Because I am going to do some, uh, some symbolism on them, but I, I'm not ready to make that decision on who's going to have what just now. So, um, let's, um, do I still have that uh, very dark, uh, here it is. We're just gonna paint the shield with this as, a, as kind of the base color. So um, let's make sure we got, uh, okay, we do not need that right there. All right. Yeah. And then uh, we'll call it a night when we're done with this guy here. So. Now there's actually some wood grain things cut into this shield that run this way. So I guess I'm going to have to roll with that and uh, make the best of it. Even though that may not be exactly what I would have had in mind, uh, we can always paint something over that.
Yeah, just add a little bit more highlight in here. Okay, I think we'll uh, we'll call it a draw at this point. This will be it. So uh, we've got this guy completely done. And uh, we'll come back and put some designs on his shield, but um, we'll do that on all the shields. I didn't want him. I've skipped over. I've skipped over a couple. We'll put uh, we'll put some designs on their shields. But okay, so that's it. We got uh, this is the one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the seventh auxilia guy. I only got two left to go. So yeah. So anyways, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and uh, did a paint along or anything like that. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you guys can get uh, notified of, uh, of any other, uh, uh, well, if you get notified, you know, when I come online, you'll know, you know, it is, you can paint along with me. So until next time, we'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.